Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Robbie. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. We are always socially distanced. It's the only way we know how to do the podcast. Um, Ross is by himself in the Eastern Time Zone, and Robbie and I are hanging out in the Midwest. <laughs> Heads up, Robbie, it's going to rain tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Here too. We've got a we've got a giant storm coming our way right now. I apologize in advance if we lose power. So I'm pretty sure happen. it's the same dry line that's stretching all the way from Wisconsin to Kansas oh, City tonight. Yeah, because we're, <laughs> we're in a severe watch until five degrees now. midnight. So, did we talk about the tornado warning last week? We did. Okay, we did. good. So I don't need to do that again. You know, I, um, always get, I always get so nervous whenever like it's really, really windy here because I we went camping this past week and I've got like the Yakima rocket box on, on top of my car. And I know that, you know, it's like rated for highway speeds and it's not going to go anywhere. But I still just have this fear when I look outside and I see like the, you know, the ash tree in front of my apartment window going like this. I'm afraid my mm-hmm. roof box is going to go flying off with all my camping gear <laughs> and up in the Milwaukee River or something like that. So. Yeah. That's Hopefully a that valid matter. concern. Like that's New at least test. plausible. Does the Yakima box float? Is it? A, can you use it as a canoe? That would be kind of cool. That would be uh, pretty funny, actually. That would be Why? sweet. Like a cargo box that doubles as like a, yeah. a pack raft or something. Canoe box. So you it's put cool. it on, and then you just take it right off. It's What's just the bottom of the Yakima box. Coin like, it. You don't have to do anything intricate. You know? Wasn't yeah. it, wasn't like product planner? Wasn't that a recent job opening at Yakima? I feel like I saw was that it? one go. I, yeah, LinkedIn. they they did have one. They did have a couple ones open. Yeah. <laughs> are are they in Connecticut or is Thule in Connecticut? Thule in Yakima is in Oregon. Yeah, right. I think. No, no, no. Yakima. Yeah. Is, is Yakima in Oregon. Yakima is in Yakima. <laughs> Yakima. <laughs> Whatever state that is. Yeah. Well, that would Yakima would be Washington. Washington. Right. There we go. Um, Google Maps. A plus for Yakima. A plus for says Washington. I'm pretty sure, pretty, pretty sure that one's Washington. So, good job between the three of us. Doing I like maps. Yeah. <laughs> maps uh. make sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the show. We're gonna uh. just talk about Robbie stuff because we're gonna start trying to do some more for- different formats with the show. And so, like, if Ross and I have big updates, we're gonna kind of do them as a separate show kind of thing um, because I think we could waste an easy mini episode with just the two of us talking and really the people that are here with us are way more interesting than us most of the time i'm not going to always have week-long trips in the van have just occurred kind of thing so Mm -hmm. um that was more of a one-off and you're that was a good episode by the way i listened to that yesterday it was nice thank you (laughs) (laughs) rumor says that chris is still tired but (laughs) (laughs) no actually i i have actually like recharged but like off after a trip like that i didn't i didn't realize how tired i had gotten mm-hmm. and then coming home and just starting to readjust to the kids and things like that it was like 7 30 at night and i was like it's bedtime right are we are we at bedtime now like is is it not and it, whole, it took the me, whole body clock is just shot anytime yeah. you shake up your regular schedule that you're you've been on for a long period of time done. well and it was, yep. it, it's that weird thing when you camp, like I was going to bed when it was dark and I was getting up at sunrise. Like it was just <laughs> the way it was. And during the summer months, like that's actually shorter. Like that's not, right. right. That's not as great, but like, yeah, most of the time. Yeah. yeah I didn't really do an alarm on that trip. It was just get up when the sun came up. So uh, now I'm the reason I'm being even more tired now is my uh, soon to be 14 year old has summer weights and conditioning that starts every morning at either 6.20 or 6.30. Coach decides the night before. That's awful. Uh, it's horrible. And it's 20 minutes across town. Oh, so I'm I, I'm getting up at five something to make oh, sure I nope. get him to that. No, nope. I did that for baseball a few years in high school. And it was, uh, yeah, be at the gym at, at like six or six yeah. or something like that. You know, and, and it's 15 minutes to the door. Yeah, they stay out of the heat of the day, which and here I, am. I don't I just, miss. I just that said here we're, we're gonna focus on Robbie, and I've already derailed us right. Back in the <laughs> oh, that's all right. <laughs> no, you got it. You got it. It's good to touch base. <laughs> Robbie's like, what is this six twenty hour you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not a morning person. <laughs> I felt like you were at the rally. You were up pretty early last last fall. <laughs> yeah, well, I, but we, that's because we had to be. <laughs> like, had to yeah, we did have to be. But even even this year, we uh, so we just had our, our spring Midwest Automotive Media Association rally at Road America uh, about two and a half, three weeks ago. Um, yeah, and I was 
helping out again, run things. And yeah, we were up at the crack of dawn doing registration. But I'll tell you what, there's kind of something about being at Road America, right? When the sun's coming up, it's kind of, it's kind of peaceful. Dude, if they, yeah, I'm definitely on board. If there's a place I'm going to be up early at, Road America is yep. on the list. <laughs> Race yep. tracks at dawn are special. Like hours before the track goes hot, it's, it's a fun. Well, and you get the, that with like oh, Lime Rock being near you, like these kind of, oh yeah. these, these tracks that have name recognition and some, got significance to them so like road america being super old lime rock being super old like those tracks in the morning it smells like rubber and gas that's great it's crazy. plus i still think i still think honestly like one of the the coolest like motoring things that you can do is go camping right next to the track and you can do that anywhere at road america pretty much mm -hmm. and my brother and i did that a couple of years ago and yeah there's there's seriously like something magical about waking up, unzipping your tent and seeing cars fly by at 70 miles an hour down the hurry down. <laughs> you know, you're brewing, you're brewing coffee over your camping stove. You're looking over and there's like a Porsche 911 flying by. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. it's pretty cool. I, I think it's, I think it's like, it should be on every, I think it should be on every enthusiast bucket list to like go camping right next to the track. The, I mean, uh, that is a good one. The corner I'm thinking of is the, is it, it's the, do they call it the carousel at Road America? That nice long carousel. Right yeah, carousel is the big loop. And yeah. camping on just on the outside of that corner, watching cars yep. kind of go down that hill would be, yeah, that's exactly awesome. where. <laughs> it's right up against the trees. It's a good one. I didn't do any photo sharing on that, but. <laughs> oh, the yeah, the carousels, um, nine into ten. Yeah, yeah. It's this big, long, swooping, swooping, just curve that. Um, it's kind of a decreasing radius. It's it? yeah it so it actually it actually goes well and it goes down and what's super interesting about it is that um when you're driving on it you know you're you're going like pretty quickly and you don't really realize the elevation change but um every year when we do our rally at road america we have a thing called like four miles of fitness which is something that kia generously sponsors and um that's a time where people want to run or bike uh or walk the track you can actually like get on the track and go around the four mile track on foot or by bike and it's super bike. super cool it's a great way to see the track and yeah when you're like on the carousel you're like right i was riding it on my bike and i was like whoa like you're actually like going down a little bit more it's just like big old swooping loop yeah there we go yeah so, so yeah so, so nine and ten yeah it's 4.04 4 miles long mm -hmm. and rock is 1.5 if you run the uphill <laughs> so that, yeah road america's a long track meanwhile it is off-road podcast talking about race cars dude well would you rather cover lime rock or road america in dirt and race it in like a stadium super truck they do stadium super truck racing at road america or at least they yeah. did a couple of years oh, really? ago yeah they put um so that that first main uh straight like where the starting line is they actually put um i believe a jump there and then i think on i want to say like going into turn five or something like that and they're actually i didn't go to the race but there are photos of these like stadium super trucks like flying off the jumps and it's just nuts <laughs> terrifying like spinal reconstruction type terrifying yeah yeah <laughs> oh there you go yeah yeah right yeah, there yeah, yeah, yeah. suspension like travel is definitely that. your friend <laughs> yeah. i just can't imagine that that's got to be what th three four feet of suspension travel yeah, Easily? it's in the back for sure. <sighs> Probably. God. Yeah. Um, but speaking of suspension travel, yeah, so we had our off-road course. And Chris, you know this because you've done the course. But um, at these rallies that we do, it's a, it's a great time for, like, media and manufacturer reps and PR and analysts to come together and, you know, see new product, drive new product on the street, on the track. Um, and then they set up an off-road course. And this year uh, we had a full day of off-roading. It was really, really, really cool. Um, they had a, uh, kind of a pretty difficult off-road course set up. And that was for like your, uh, Grand Cherokees and your Wranglers and your TRXs. And then they actually had like a, uh, kind of like a deviation off for like more of like your soft off-roaders, like a forest or wilderness or like a Mitsubishi Outlander rally, um, RAV4 adventure, RAV4 TRB, adventure, that kind TRB. of stuff. Yeah. So 26 inches of travel is what it, Google says about the stadium super trucks, which that's insane is a lot, but like some of the big side-by-sides have that too, you know? Well, and what's, what's, what's the, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what, like the wheel travel is on like a Raptor. 
Uh, great not question. That much. I want to say it's like 14, not that much. I was going to yeah. say 14, 14 16. Like yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, man, that's that's another whole 10 inches of travel. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the off road course was super cool. We um, it it literally rained the entire day pretty much. And uh, what made it great was that. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, that's Jim O'Brien. Perfect. Jurassic yeah, Park I, I was like shit trying to remember who had posted a crap ton of photos and jim was high on my list <laughs> yeah so this was this was it was a blast um it made the it was raining all day and it pretty much just rained, made the off-road course way more way better than it should so um, more fun it was yeah it was an absolute hoot i spent a ton of time out there just doing laps and as many things as i could um See those wheels are covered in mud. So, yeah, okay, so, yeah. so, so, so like in that get? right, that shot right there is pretty cool. That's like you you do up a, you go up a big hill and then you kind of go into a splash zone. Um, well, let's. Oh, that's let's, a rock creek path. Yeah. yeah so let's yeah. so let's talk about this thing. Okay. Yeah, we want to talk about what you drove that is different from what we talked about what what you did last time. So let's start with the rock creek pathfinder because yeah, I, so, I have some you know uninformed like armchair thoughts on it and okay uh, want to hear what what behind the wheel is like yeah so obviously like the new pathfinder um it's the second go with the rock creek edition the last pathfinder the one with that cbt um it was definitely more of like a styling update you know it didn't really have like knobby tires <laughs> it was just it was really just like a uh, it was a market, it was like you know like does. Yeah, yeah, it was like you know, it was like it was like your suburban dad wearing a Patagonia jacket, but he doesn't have a pair of hiking boots, you know. <laughs> hey, hey, we don't like, have to get personal. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just, <laughs> he's not saying suburban owning dad. He's saying suburban dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> or are you saying suburban owning dad? <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah. So, so cool. guys, the yeah, the right. new the new Pathfinder. First of all, the new Pathfinder itself is miles better than the old one um it definitely feels a lot more rugged it's more mm -hmm. way more like fun to drive it looks badass uh but then in the world of modern turbocharged stuff is like such a freaking pleasure yeah it's a it's a great engine and that new nine speed works perfect with it um but the second go with the rock creek edition they finally kind of like took a bite out of this like craving that people have for like soft off-roaders which is great because the pathfinder is a perfect vehicle for it um and yeah the new the new rock the new pathfinder rock creek's like so much more capable you got actual like all-terrain tires on it you've got the oat threes which yep. i have on the lexus and they are i cannot recommend them enough yeah they're great that. they're it's great tires too. you've got you got some skid plates underneath you've yep. got a, a really nice burly roof rack but it's um, fake bead locks. Why does it have to have fake bead locks? Because it's a styling thing. It is a styling thing. But fake bead um, locks are the affliction t-shirt of the offer of world. <laughs> I mean, you're Sorry. not wrong, but also like I'm less <laughs> offended by the fake bead locks than I am the affliction t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> or the the one that lately that has been self-identifying is the uh, was it lions not sheep? Like I feel like that's the new affliction t-shirt. It's like <laughs> sorry. That's another topic for another day. Uh, okay. Continue with your observations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, but but um, I'll tell you, I I I mean, I'll I did not do any type of off roading in the first Pathfinder Rock Creek. Um, it was obviously more of a styling update, but this one was far more capable. Um, you know, I think I can't remember off the top of my head how big of a lift kit it has. It might be like three quarters of an inch or something like that, but um combined with those AT tires and like a pretty decent all wheel drive system and an actual automatic rather than a CBT just bouncing around. Um, that Pathfinder Rock Creek was surprisingly capable, like pretty, pretty good. Um, and, you know, I think in terms of like all the, the soft roading that they had for it, I mean, it didn't get stuck at all. It didn't struggle with anything. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a legitimate soft road or a soft off-roader now, thankfully, because like the last one was just more of a showboat. Did you get a price on it? Did they say anything? Uh, I don't have they even announced pricing on it yet. I don't think I, they have, and I think that was one of the questions. Like at New York, at the New York Auto Show, was oh, so are we talking you know high forties or are we talking touching high fifties here? Uh, you know what? You're right. They have not. 
that's crazy because it, it goes on sale this summer i mean so i don't know if but when we had it in may if that was technically before sale or on sale but i was super excited to see it there because uh it definitely got a lot of attention it looks good it, it really truly does mm-hmm. look the part mm-hmm. so I saw okay, it in what person. else hold on i saw it in person at expo west too and and kind of did a double take i was like oh that's that's not bad like, yeah it's yeah. when i first it saw pictures the, i was like come on you know what it is it has fender flares that yep. are not painted body color and yep. it has the right sidewall to wheel ratio yep. yeah that's all you need like we're not you know this isn't groundbreaking here and it also has you know the crazy like lighting treatment on the front and the back that makes it look bigger than it is but that's a different story. <laughs> every every website i can find says it has a suspension lift but there's not a single number attached. I think it's I think it's something pretty little. I think it's like three quarters of an inch or something like that. Oh, I don't I don't remember. All point that. six it's inches. Point oh, six. Great. Okay. Finally, car and driver. Awesome. Got me. <laughs> awesome. So, what else did you drive? Any um, other big excitement? Yeah, yeah. So, I I tried to do just like a lot of the soft off rotors because that's kind of like what I'm really into. But um. Mm-hmm. Mazda had their new CX-50 there Ooh. and um, that was you know, talking with other people there that were driving the off-road course like even like I think Jim O'Brill said the same thing too but um, we were super surprised how good that thing was in the really really slippery muddy uh, trails. Um, they did not have the meridian edition uh whatever they're like more off-roady one is called so this was the the, is that the one with like the roof rack and there's the one with the roof rack and the more burly i think they're i think they're doing like prime meridian no yeah, I might be turn. getting I might be getting the trim name wrong. I'm, I'm, it's been a long time. But... This is the equator. Remember the equator? <laughs> Speaking of from Suzuki. Yeah, the re, what was it? It was a rebadged Frontier. I thought it was a rebadged. Oh no, wait, hold on. No, the Mitsu- that was the Suzuki Dodge Raider. You're thinking of the Dodge Raider, which was the a Suzuki yes. Equator yeah. and the Mitsubishi yeah. something or other were both Nissan Frontiers that just had yep. different bodies on them. And the other reason I remember the equator is because I was trying to help Pete find that car part that he put in Slack earlier to the hand. So I was looking at old Suzuki websites. Yeah, and of all places that he found that. Part. I thought, I thought, oh no, no, you're right. Yeah, because the Dodge Dakota was different than. Yeah, yeah it was it was mm-hmm. Nissan Frontier and Mitsubishi Raider or whatever. I thought so. With <laughs> CX everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, it was not this version or whatever. It's whatever their like more off road one is. Um, I think it's is called that the, was there. No, that was not there. So this was more of like I think the touring, but it had like more street tires on it. Had a nice interior, but um, Jim's gonna help every, us out again. <laughs> Jim took pictures. Here we have the wild <laughs> CX fifty stalking its prey. <laughs> but yeah, so that car was not even their full-blown like dedicated off-road one and it was super super capable mm-hmm. um it was definitely a little bit lower to the ground so it was like scraping everywhere in there but it did not get stuck and that was kind of like a big surprise that people had that whole day um was just how capable and fun that thing was um which leaves room for more potential like when that more off-road trim comes um and then what else did i drive that was super super cool so Mitsubishi <laughs> brought their Outlander Rebel Rally Racer there. Sorry, that's a fire truck. Fire yeah, that's loud. That is. <laughs> You're good. It's gone. It's gone enough. There we go. Um, yeah, so Mitsubishi brought their uh, Outlander Rebel Rally Racer there that they actually used in the Rebel Rally. I'm unfortunately Rebel. blanking on who. His rebel. Rebel. rebel rebel oh are you serious i'm saying it wrong the entire time yeah, it's, yeah. Rebel. it's rebel <laughs> two l's and an e at the end uh-huh. rebel. <laughs> sorry dude uh, we've had uh, we've had rebel. two have did you do that rebel. wait did you do that on the other version. podcast today too uh no we only talked about toyota stuff on that one so Woo. thankfully i didn't good deal it. all right so We'll have to edit this out. Anyways, but <laughs> no, we're not. Shigishi, we're leaving that <laughs> Mitsubishi brought their Outlander Rebel Rally, yeah. um, which was literally a stock Outlander 
with the suspension lift, I can't remember, I think it was two inches. And then it had skid plates underneath. It had, uh, I can't remember what kind of tires it had. I can look that up. But um, it was like rotiform wheels. What are those? They were BF Goodrich TAKO2. Like, those are KO2s. What are yeah, the wheels? And this thing was an absolute hoot to drive. It was <laughs> probably my favorite thing I drove there. The inside of it, um, I don't know, maybe you can find a photo of that I took from the show notes or something like that, but uh, the inside of it still had like all the timing gear set up. So they had all these like, oh, yeah, yeah. computers on the dashboard and a fire extinguisher on the floor. Um, and it was so much fun. Um, people were having a hoot with it. Uh, and I was actually able to drive it like in the more muddier part of the muddier part of the day in the late afternoon. Um, and vision. what's up with their vision branded wheels. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was, I was no, trying no, to you're good. You're good. Um, but yeah, it was, it was super, super cool. Um, I was very surprised how just unstoppable it was more so than like the Lexus LX 600 that they had out there on the off-road course that uh, tires. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest difference off road. Yep. 100%. So, is this the Outlander that shares bones with like the Nissan Rogue? Yep. The latest Rogue, correct. Is same, it good? What's is up? it like? Is it good? Is it like an actual? Disc? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I have not. I have not driven the regular Outlander yet. Um, apart from this one off road. Uh, but I have been in the new Rogue, and uh, it's a big, big improvement over the over the last generation. Um, solid platform, good oh, wow. powertrain. Um, the Rogue doesn't have the third row, uh, which in the Outlander, I guess, is a pretty petite third row. But I mean, it's a great it, that, yeah, it's a great vehicle. Cool. cool. I mean, that thing looks like a freaking blast. Oh, it was so much fun. And I can't remember if there was a so Jeremy Barnes from Mitsubishi, he's their uh, head of PR. Um, nicest guy in the world but i can't remember if he said that it had either a heat shield that was a little rattly or maybe a tiny tiny exhaust leak or something it was probably a heat shield but it actually sounded like a rally car like it kind of had this loud like <laughs> buzz to it which made it even awesome fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah i mean those those he's like yeah that's broken <laughs> rally car <laughs> but yeah i mean those i mean you put you throw a lift kit on there and those BFG KO2s and that thing was just so much fun. Absolutely fun. Cool. Uh, I Sounds think good. that's, I think that's really about it off road. Oh, I know we, I know you guys have talked about it a lot, but I did take the Forester wilderness off road, um, which having now off-roaded the wilderness or the outback wilderness and the Forester wilderness, I will definitely say that I am much more team Forester wilderness. It's, way more nimble Ooh. it's smaller uh you know it's lighter <laughs> to kind of fling around it's mm -hmm. it was really 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 fun and it makes a ton of sense everything you said there it was like yes this adds up this adds up this yeah up. i still <laughs> want an outback <laughs> yeah i mean the, the outbacks the outbacks a great vehicle if you want the extra space but i don't know i mean i had the forester wilderness and then a couple weeks later i actually had a um more recently, a GMC Terrain AT4 that I was testing. And oh, no. it, it, yeah. <laughs> um, and you can totally tell the difference between one automaker committing to the whole like soft off road crossover trend and the other just being like, eh, we're going to kind of dip our toes in it and see what happens and not fully committing. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, that Forester Wilderness was, was so much fun and they did a really, really good job on it. Did you get in the new Tundra at all? I did not. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did one lap on it. I okay. did one lap on it. Um, so and I actually had like seems, Jennifer. What's up? I'm assuming it seems very capable. It was pretty good. It was, uh, I think I took one of the hills a little too quickly because I bottomed out and uh, <laughs> a horrific amount of noise came from underneath. I but I looked at I looked at the PR person in the seat next to me and I was like, that's why you put skid plates on these things, you know? <laughs> yeah. Was, was Jennifer next to you? <laughs> yeah, Jennifer Grinfelder was sitting nice. there. Like, what are you doing? 
know. <laughs> That's awesome. Just, Robbie, don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's like I had I had Dom in that Outback Wilderness with me, and and I was like, can I do the hard obstacle? And he was like, please don't. Somebody else already broke it. I was like, yeah, <laughs> but I'm not gonna break it. Like, they just pop the face you off the front just because yeah. too fast, too fast for the whoops. Like people mm -hmm. who don't know what they're doing are gonna have mistakes like that. It's fine. Right, right. <laughs> but 100 percent the Outback could have done it. Yeah. So that was that was when I drove at the rally. Uh, it was a great time. A lot of a lot of cool off roading stuff. Um. Okay, we get. I've got two car questions for you. Yeah, shoot. GT86. GR. GR86, whatever the Toyota. I don't, I'm buying a BRZ. I don't care. <laughs> Why does the Toyota six. <laughs> did you get in at all? Uh, I did. I did not. So I did not drive it at Road America, but I did drive it at, um, when I was in Plano, Texas at Toyota's thing, I was able to get on the track in it. Okay. Um, so we, we can come back to that later if you want. Yeah, so we can we can we can shelf that for now. What was your other question? This new Z. Haven't driven it. Okay. You didn't get in. I purposely chose not to drive it at the rally because I'm supposed to get it in a couple of weeks. And I'd rather okay. let somebody that Ooh. isn't getting it um get some seat time in it. Uh so mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I'll wait my turn. But um as far mm -hmm. as I I mean, Ross, you'll like this. I of course, took a Miata out again and was giggling oh, like hey, a little hey. kid because it's the greatest car in the world. Um, normal sized people. Yeah, so good. <laughs> but yeah, Chris, you need to come next year. Road America was awesome. Yeah, I was I would have liked to been. <laughs> it actually, I thought the dates were more lined up and I wouldn't have it would have been harder for me. I think I could have done both if I truly wanted to. Mm -hmm. I, I would have been utterly exhausted, but I think <laughs> Sarah probably would have. And also, <laughs> also Ross, I'll also say this too, Ross, you should join because it is, even though we're the Midwest Automotive Media Association, it is open mm -hmm. to people across the country. So we have members from both coasts. We have members from Texas. We have people Send me the link. in Canada. So you're more than welcome to join. We'd love to have you. You're more than merry. I will make myself a note right now. You should. Be a member tomorrow. Hey. Awesome. Get your bylines uh, ready. <laughs> yeah, right. It's um, not like you don't have any. <laughs> you're playing. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> cool. I think when I first joined, I had nothing. There was like all Hooniverse stuff. <laughs> I mean. Thank you, Jeff, for allowing me to have those Hooniverse thoughts. <laughs> Hey, before we before we jump into our next topic, can we talk Kia Telluride for a hot second? Yeah, I'm sure. It's soft off roader still. So and you want to talk new one? So let's talk a little bit about both. So I had the um, I recently had a 2022 SX, and it had the um, I think I don't know. It's not like the Fallout edition. It's like the Midnight edition, whatever. It's black the night, night, Nightfall. 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 So, okay. So I had, I'm, I'm looking at my review. My, mine was white. I wonder if you had the same one. Mine was, this was not, not white. white. Okay. It was <laughs> that weird uh, non-metallic-y blue gray mm -hmm. color, whatever mm -hmm. it is. I had an SX V6. Okay. Um, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, so that that was that was what I had, and um, having been in multiple three row crossovers lately, uh, you know, I thought for a while, like you know, Nissan Frontier, the latest one is is super good. I would actually put it still at the same playing field as Telluride and and Palisade, so it's that good. Obviously, not better, but on the same playing field. Um, but man, I'll tell you, after a week in the Telluride again, Kia just has still nailed it. That is such a good vehicle but the reason i wanted to bring it up is you know what is devastating about this 2023 refresh that's coming is that the that like signature amber daytime running light is gone oh really yeah i was muted and said the exact the, same thing as ross <laughs> the wide amber drls at the far ends of that grill are the probably the most iconic design that Kia's exactly ever had exactly and and I've, I've i've had a couple of friends of mine that have either bought tellurides or they are looking at them and they're sad that it's not going to have that yeah the new ones have oh. redesigned headlight clusters oh that yeah have, um i think they're just like vertical bars now it is 
the amber. Two individual vertical bars. Yeah. At either end. Yeah. I mean, so, it's still distinctive. Like it's not, yeah. It's not it's, just you know. I don't like nothing. it. I want yeah. the old one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, anyways, that was my only my random <laughs> Telluride plug. The Telluride is so freaking good, though. Like. Mm-hmm. I don't Did, love the engine. I don't love the transmission, but as like start to finish vehicle experience, it is just, it's, I don't know. There's not much else for the price that gets even close. Well, the it's, taillights are still Range Rover Rovery looking now. Mm-hmm. The new Range yeah. Rover mimicking. Oh, God. The Telluride is one of those rare hands. vehicles on sale right now that Kia literally doesn't have to do anything to it. Like, it's so good just as it is um you know i'm glad they're like restyling it a little bit because like i did think it was like starting to age a little bit but um i'm excited to drive that new x pro that has at tires and a lift and uh more of a capable wheel drive system and 500 pounds more towing capacity yeah because that's always been the telluride's biggest downfalls i've friends yeah. of mine that tow boats or tow campers and they wanted to tell you ride and they're like i need something that tows more i know the Excellent. pathfinder tows the most in that whole category and it's you know six thousand yeah. pounds from a unibody is like that's pretty impressive that's a lot of towing capacity yeah um, <laughs> i didn't have a spectacular experience towing with it but you know tell you ride or pathfinder is, um, the pathfinder oh just didn't work out or yeah. Yeah, it uh, the rear parking sensors don't deactivate, so parking up sensors the are a catastrophe. Oh. You put it in tow mode and it doesn't shut off any of the parking stuff, so you back up and it auto brakes the second you try to back up. Oh, and there, no. at least in the one I had, there was no way to turn off the rear parking sensors, which made it like unbelievably difficult to reverse with the trailer have you messaged have you sent a message to nissan about that? i had a conversation with them about it and they uh-huh. said that it was something they were working on it was an existing complaint from the prior pathfinder which there is like miles and miles of stuff on the forums about but yeah. no actual fix um that seems like such a like a oh, basic God. thing to here's a fun fact Every automaker, when you put the vehicle in tow mode, should turn off the backup parking sensors. Because if you're in tow mode, chances are there's something behind you all the time. It's yeah. not fucking rocket science. Right, right. Uh, so found, you just... I found the inside of the Outlander finally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. So yeah, circle back to that. So <laughs> yeah, it looks the, like me something. <laughs> the Rebel Rally. There we go. There you go. Two inch lift. Wow, that's not nothing. Yeah. Um, so when you were so when you were towing with the Pathfinder, was it just beeping the entire time? Not only beeping, but it would apply the automatic brake, thinking <laughs> that I was backing up into something. I have a video of this. I sent it to Chris. Oh, it's God. conical. It's oh. it's absolutely terrible. Dude, that video is from like what six months ago, eight months ago, more than that. That was like <laughs> September. Oh, yeah, I have yikes. no idea where that is. <laughs> but it, it also just you know I only towed like three thousand pounds with it, and it just didn't love the weight it, interesting it wasn't it wasn't that there was anything specific that was mm-hmm. of note it wasn't the chassis or the brakes or you know getting up to speed it was just it never felt like happy hmm. doing the towing job which I mean, you you know you can't expect it to and you know meanwhile i towed more than that with a frontier and could not have cared less Hmm. So uh, interesting. Rabbi, I got a quick question for you. Has yeah. the expedition timberline embargo passed? <laughs> I did drive that one. I totally yeah. remember that. <laughs> Can you talk about it? <laughs> I'm yeah, 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 yeah. The embargo passed now that okay. I remember that. Um it it's a, struggled. It did it? it really? <laughs> yeah, it did not do that well. Um there i i know i was also not the first person to say that uh i think they it, it looks great you know it's it's got it's got nice tires it's got some cool like blacked out from fascia and like you know some skid plates and all that but um it just did not i don't know if it was because like 
the ego boost just felt like a dog in it or it was just you know the because it's such a big heavy vehicle but um like 5600 pounds it just it just did not do that well i mean i will be i will be 200 percent honest that mazda cx50 did better than that expedition did. <laughs> that's not yeah. super surprising yeah and I was I was kind of surprised. I that was the first that was the first Timberline product I'd driven. I haven't driven like the Explorer one yet. Um they're but, all marketing but, exercises. Like if you want an off-road forward, buy a Bronco. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I was gonna say it probably didn't do very good on those tires because the tires didn't say good year, good year. They had Wrangler on them. So <laughs> but yeah, I was that was kind of unfortunately the uh the um the common common reaction was people were like yeah the expedition didn't do too well um so hopefully hopefully i don't know how else they could fix it i just it i don't know it didn't seem like it was it was it was just struggling like the 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 four-wheel drive system was just like really really struggling to like keep up and whatnot so i I mean this is a silly question was it in like the mud wet mode like it was in the mud mode because it was how much air was in said tires Probably, probably whatever all it of drove, it yeah probably whatever it drove here on <laughs> 55 psi i don't think they i don't think they adjusted like the, i don't think they oh, changed really? the air on any of the tires for oh, the, wow. the off-road vehicles <laughs> yeah that, that that could add some uh, help, but so. <laughs> that could be part of it but yeah which makes a huge that makes a huge difference yeah i mean it makes a huge difference but if everything went with factory settings of air pressure then that you still that's still a control like yeah true that is true yeah so all right all right buddy you want to you get into toyota land yeah because like for a while i just thought you moved to texas like <laughs> yeah i was uh so don't recommend yeah uh that's for another whole, whole nother podcast uh, <laughs> yes that is <laughs> um, we can we can do an episode on dick joke with jason with that one <laughs> yeah. that's our spin-off uh adult comedy uh, podcast Robbie. Yeah. We, haven't, <laughs> we haven't actually launched it it's just a recurring nope. joke at this point nope but yeah, all right so let's talk yeah so toyota toyota had their hq confidential event um that was held down at their headquarters in plano texas which is this gorgeous gorgeous complex that they built um there's me with alexis lfa but pretty much it was it was a week of new product reveals um some really cool new technology we got to have demos for um and then it also combined in with the first drives of the sequoia uh, and then Toyota and Lexus also had a bunch of vehicles there that you can either take on the street on um, Eagles Canyon Raceway, which I think was like about a mile long track. Uh, and then there was also an off-road course set up. So it was a, a, a great chance to just like try out some of their new products, some stuff I hadn't driven yet, some stuff that I had driven that I haven't been able to take off-road. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an excellent event. Toyota did a great job uh, and they, you know, they really put put their hearts out into it. So, Sequoia or LX six hundred? Well, how much money do you have? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Once they mark up the TRD Pro Sequoias, there's not gonna be that much of a difference between that and the base LX. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, so, I love the Land Cruiser, like the last Land Cruiser. I miss it like hell, but. The Sequoia TRD Pro is a monster off-road. Um, it was it was a hoot. I mean, it was just that I, I'll tell you. I mean, you've driven the Tundra, yeah, Ross? Not the new one. Not the new yeah, one. Right. Right. Either new one yet. So you guys haven't had that twin turbo 3.5 V6? Nope. That engine is so good off-road. Um so I was able to do it in the Sequoia TRD Pro here, but then also that LX 600. Okay. Uh, and just the that the brute amount of torque, just like constantly available, just makes it so much fun. It's just like you're like riding a snowmobile. It's just like constantly going and constantly going. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll tell you as much as I miss the Land Cruiser, like the Sequoia is a pretty damn good essential replacement, if you want to call it that. <laughs> The Sequoia is a great land cruiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's as close as we're unfortunately <laughs> ever going to get. It's it's as, it's it's as close as we're going to get to the land cruiser, pretty much. That, it, for yeah. having a Toyota badge on it. There's so many land cruiser guys that it pains them to give any kind of like props to a Sequoia. But it's really good. They did a great job on it. I mean, it's 
the last one was around for like god 14 years 15 years or something like that 2008 2008 to 2022 so 14 model years if i'm doing my math right which is Um, why as soon as this one came out i was like crap now my 2008 doesn't look like the new ones i mean we we could also play the game how many presidents has it been oh that's a good point but but so like fun (laughs) so fun fun fact the last sequoia um obviously 2008 model year debuted in it went on sale in 2007 consumer year right um when i was a junior in high school I was working at a Toyota dealership as a detailer and a lot boy. And I remember when the new Sequoias all came in. Um, so it was crazy to think that that in 2007, was funny. you were a junior in high school. Yeah, I was too. So. Hey, oh, hey, That's Mr. Right. Old Man. Yep. You're both, you're yeah. both the same. <laughs> okay. In the sake of time, we can we talk about the, the Corolla? that everybody's talking about oh yeah 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 um i don't even know the name of it i just put so so there's the gr corolla um and that's the super hot hatch with the three-cylinder turbocharged engine um that makes a ludicrous amount of power um and then toyota also debuted at this event their marizo edition which um uh akio toyota toyota's number one um pretty much like put all his effort into designing this specific model. Like he had a hand in every say, you know, every test of it, they showed clips of him at the test track being like, you know, like that needs to change. This needs to get better. This is like his, like, um, what's the word I want it? Like brainchild. Brainchild. There we go. That's the word. <laughs> um, so no backseat, stiffer yeah. all around. Yep. So it's, it's, they shed about a hundred pounds from it. And essentially what they did was they, they took out the back seat, the rear windshield wiper, um, the rear door speakers, the rear power windows. So like there's actually a block plate over, yeah, where the window switches mm. are on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. All the seat <laughs> stuff was around. removed in the back seat. And there are three braces that go across the back. Um, that brace is sketchy looking, gotta say. Sketchy looking? Yeah. The one that Chris says up in the pictures now that looks like it, it oh no wait there's another bar there never mind I yeah yeah, yeah. i did not <laughs> my computer does a terrible job of making distinctions between colors and they're no 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 you're good. completely so omitted yeah so there's, of that. there's, there's okay. one that comes up from Disregard. the floor yeah there's one that comes up from the floor one that comes up from like kind of the the hip position of where the seat would be and then yep. um one across the uh the rear towers but um so essentially like they shed hundred pounds, they picked up, um, 20 something extra pound feet of torque. Uh, it's got like more like grippy tires on it, like pilot sport cup twos. Um, and then they recalibrated the six speed too, just for like a little bit shorter drive. And I'll tell you, it is, unfortunately we weren't allowed to drive any of the GR Corollas, but I went for a hot lap in this one with one of Toyota's professional drivers. And guys, I usually don't get car sick, but we were going 80 miles an hour, like sideways. And I mean, I remember getting out of the car and like taking off my helmet and being like, holy shit, I need to like check myself for a sec. And I was dizzy (laughs) for like the next like half hour, Um, but it's, it's a rocket ship. It's an absolute rocket ship. Um, it sounds like somebody kicked over a hornet's nest. It's just got this really distinct, like buzzy three cylinder. That sounds really, really good. Turbo three sound great. They all so is yeah, it, is it distinct enough that it's going to be like Subaru noises and then Corolla GR noises? Like, yes, yes, okay, 100%. good. <laughs> yeah, you won't mistake the two. Well, I just um, want to. I want to hear both. I guess is what I was saying. I was like, I want it surround sound of well, Subarus and GRs. It's it's a very distinct note. I mean, if you were to park a uh, a Supra and a GR86 and a GR Corolla all next to each other, um, you'd be able to tell the difference. And that, Mar- that Marizo edition, they're only limiting it to like 200 units, but they are, uh, if I recall correctly, they are going to offer it for 2024 model year. So this first year, it's like a limited batch and then they're mm-hmm. going to like do more of it. But huh. um, they're doing what, uh, what like Seat and them 
you know, and, and mm -hmm. Renault do in the UK with like the really hardcore Nürburgring editions that yeah. just eventually become normal things you can buy. Yeah. I mean, it was, I don't know, guys. I know this is an off road podcast, but holy crap. I mean, that thing. It's a rally car. Dude, that's we're a good. rally car. We're good. We're, it's all, rally we're in the rally. Yeah. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not. There's no suspension travel and there's like effectively no ground clearance. <laughs> but that's what some know. Subarus are nowadays. They, they some? drop them and make them fast. So, <laughs> yeah, all of them now. But I will say, of I will say this about off roading real quick, just to tie it back to the, the off roading thing. I was able to take a rav4 trd off road i always get their terms mm -hmm. mixed up but yeah there's an adventure and there's a TRD yeah there we go off road um and this was Looks like a super <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so so yeah. this was surprisingly capable too um mm -hmm. it did not struggle but i mean i'll tell you like it was nimble and those wild peaks were really really great but um having gone from the uh, Sequoia TRD Pro, which has like, I think 538 pound feet of torque or something like that. A bunch. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a bunch. To, to this, um, it was just kind of funny because I was like, yeah, you know, the articulation was great. I was able to do a little bit of rock crawling and it was fun. It had no issue at all. Um, but then there was a spot where it was like, there was a mile stretch of the off-road course. Or it was just a big muddy course. And you can just go as fast as you want, pretty much, as long as you don't flip it. Um, Kill the track. Yeah. Yeah, but it was so funny because I was like, all right, here we go. And I was like flooring it. And I'm like, oh, man, there's nothing here. <laughs> there's nothing here. <laughs> Something's got to give. But it's a, you know, it's a good cut little. Cut the price in half. Yeah, and it's, but it's a good little soft off-roader. Like, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing it, a lot of good stuff with the RAV4 right now. Mm -hmm, Time mm -hmm. for a, a, a TRD Prime. Oh, that would be cool. Would it be a prime off road or would it be a would it be a TRD prime? They should call it like the TRD Earth Saver or something like that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like something. <laughs> that's that, that's greenwashing. Okay. <laughs> the uh can we talk about the uh, third row sorry. seat in Sequoia real fast? Because you're a little yeah, video here. So, so this is an interesting execution. Um being that the Sequoia's uh twin turbo 3.5 v6 has standard hybridization they pretty much mounted that battery pack under the third row um and that is why if you look kind of there's like a tray right there um that is why there's not a flush load floor um so they designed it in the sense that like you don't remove the third row seats but they do slide up to six inches which is pretty cool um, but then if you fold that third row flat, you would then move that cargo shelf up a notch and then have like a flat floor. So it is somewhat of a yeah. flat floor across like the, both the, uh, the third row. And then once you drop that second row, but it's really relatively high. And there are definitely like some, I've read some complaints that people have about it. Like, oh, you should have just like, you know, done the third row better. The third row is really not that bad on it. Um, I will be honest. I mean, I think Grand Wagoneer, Wagoneer has the best third row in the segment. Um, and I think that the Suburban and the uh, Tahoe, Yukon, all that jazz, I don't like the third row in that. I would actually place Sequoia's third row above that. <laughs> um, but that third row in the Sequoia with the whole like multi-step thing to get it actually flat like if you're a family that's going to be using that a lot that might be a little bit of a headache well the, i don't think it should be i don't think it should be a deal breaker by any means right. then mm. the ability to slide that third row seat forward though is pretty cool when you still need yeah. the seat belts but need the added mm -hmm. cargo space mm -hmm. that's because that's the issue that we run into with our sequoias like if it's mm -hmm. if we're going to multiple little league games one of my kids' catching gear bag is the size of airport luggage. The ability to slide one of those two thirds of it or the 40% yeah. side forward. Yeah. It's a huge difference. And it's Massive. very, it's very, it's, they did a really good job engineering that because it's super, super lightweight. I mean, I'm not a strong person and I could do it with one hand pushing it yeah, back. And forth. I, that was the part in your video where I let it, let it go a couple of times because you, you were just using one hand. Like it was, yeah, good. it it's was the, really, and there's, there's really no, 
unfortunate or there's really no way to like fix that problem because if you're going to have that hybrid battery pack unless we get the mm-hmm. you know if they ever decide to put solid state batteries in there and you can compact them down a little bit more there's no real way to position that hybrid battery elsewhere so that you do have like a flush third row without having to do like adjustable cargo cargo shelf and whatnot but um second row is great tons of room back there really good egress for like getting in and out um Dude, this, that's my favorite thing about the segway is how wide that door yeah opens. it's great like if you want to load kids in the back seat or if you want to put gear back there um the other thing too is that third row the sliding that we were just talking about you can actually do it from the second row once you like pop the buckets down you can actually reach down and do it with one hand from the second row which is great mm-hmm. so i mean they did a good job it's a different approach obviously to to other third rows but like is this you in the third row that is okay so I'm six foot two and um, I mean, you know, my knees are definitely high up because you're sitting on top of that battery pack, but you know, you've got a nice window. Um, I Too frequent that somebody six two is going to be spending a long amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Them. And that's that. And, and uh, that's exactly it, Ross. Like, you know, like that third row is not designed for adults, you know, yeah, and yeah. exactly. In but, few vehicles is it? Yeah. But if you did need to ride in the third row, it really wouldn't be that bad. And the majority of people that are going to buy a Sequoia are going to put their little kids back there if they have that many kids. Mm-hmm. Um, they have and, that many. They do. Yeah, they have that many kids. <laughs> 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 but, but in reality, if you if you have that many kids, you should buy a Sienna. That's just my. <laughs> there you go, dude. It, it is it, Siennas are. There you go. Yeah, Sienna. Well, yeah. Right. Or a Kia Carnival. Carnival. Yeah, I was yeah the Carnival. Oh, the Carnival is great. Yeah, I still haven't been in one. <laughs> oh, you're hard. missing out. The Carnival is so good. Kia nailed it with that. I'm pretty sure there was one at the last rally, and I was like, I'm going to drive more BRC <laughs> on the track. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, sweet. Was there anything else down in Texas that you want to touch on there? Uh, let's see. There's a really cool uh, piece of technology coming out that I'll just touch briefly on that Toyota is working on. So, Toyota has a group called Toyota Connected, and it's essentially like their startup. It's like their startup division. It's like a really tech focused, really innovative, really passionate group of people. Um, And they came out with this really cool technology called Cabin Alert or Cabin Awareness. Yeah, Cabin Awareness. Um, And essentially what it is, and since Chris, you're a dad, Ross, you're about to be a dad, um, it is a 4D uh, radar that is literally about the size of your phone that is in the roof of a Sienna. Um, And what it does is it detects like tiny, tiny micro micro movements. And the idea of it is, is because unfortunately like kids and pets get left in hot cars all the time. Um, And it's just horrific when that happens. But what this system can do is it can actually detect if there's like a child or a pet, even in the cargo area, Hmm. of the vehicle and then when it senses that what it does is it not only alerts you on your smartphone but you can have it linked up to like your house so like say you're living you're like in your living room Mm -hmm. and yeah here you go so it'll show you like where the where people are or if there are things in the vehicle that are triggering it but what's great about it is, is say you park your vehicle outside and you forgot you left your dog in the cargo area if you're sitting down in your living room like having dinner or something like that you'll get an alert on your like Alexa speaker. And then also if you have like a smart light bulb, it'll even like flash colors to let you know that it's there. And then, then they revoke your dog from you. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's, it's, it's a really cool technology and they're like working on like, you know, alerting you know, like other drivers too. So if you have a Toyota and you're in a parking lot, you know, you might get a notification like, Hey, this, this Corolla has a, a, a child in it. Can you go like help them out? Um, it's just, I don't know. I think it's, I think to me, honestly, like as a, as a safety person, that was probably my favorite thing I saw down there that week. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's critically yeah. important. That um, was, that was one of the running jokes on our trip because the, uh, we only had two guys in every van mm-hmm. and, uh, the, the shorter van, uh, had it's, it is a, I think it's a 20, 22 model year and the rear occupant <laughs> detection reminder was still turned on oh. There's only two people in the van all the time yeah and the rest of the van is a, a badass adventure van like there's nobody else back there. yeah like, yeah 
but it's a, it's a, it's a cool system and they're they're working on uh they're testing it right now with some autonomous fans and they're hoping to have it out in production um within the next couple of years or so so um well cool. yeah it was a great event toyota is toyota's really killing it yeah they're they're certainly trying did they talk about guardian at all guardian it was like it is the lame name that they were talking about years ago kind of thing. And it was about basically the interconnected vehicle thing. So basically Guardian meant that no Toyota could run into like another Toyota. Like they, the, huh. you, the cars themselves. Oh, man. Wait. My eyes are rolling over here. Right. And, <laughs> and I mean, here's a Dallas Morning News article. So I'm sure the dates from like 20. 20- 16 or something are you talking are you talking like uh vehicle to vehicle communication yeah it like, was like vehicle to vehicle it was like it's from ces from like 2019 guardians oh, of the toyota great yeah. well um, and it was just basically that no toyotas could actually run into each other ross it was, mm-hmm. it was more it wasn't so much accepted it wasn't it wasn't so much um autonomous driver or anything like that it was more of a driver safety aid basically mm-hmm. right like automatic yeah. braking and things like that but it was yeah more like the 360 view of what was around you they didn't they didn't say anything about that but i would imagine that that's probably still in the cards for them ross don't go get a avalon and try and ram a camera and, and try and make that happen <laughs> have you guys seen days of thunder no i have not if you've never you seen it, oh my god, that's right. there's a You're rental crazy car. young. There's, there, there's a rental <laughs> rental car scene in that, and I think that is the note that I will end for my, for a long time. I referred to days of on. I referred to days of thunder as Top Gun two because <laughs> 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 uh, it just it felt like Tom Cruise <laughs> want to fly fighter jets. Check Tom Cruise uh, wants to drive race cars. Check. Uh, yeah. like, <laughs> I've Top been getting Gun I've been getting so much crap lately because the new Top Gun is out and I have not even seen the first one. So it's on I, Netflix, oh, wow. it's on Amazon, yeah, to, it's on Hulu. Have to watch like, it. And the I'm first one for free yeah. everywhere. And I'm literally driving a Ford Maverick this week. So nice. <laughs> Which that yeah, you hat should, tip you to William Bird's joke. As soon as Maverick came out, he made a Top Gun edition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. he's pretty good with the Photoshop. So he is um, a genius at it. I will. Jeff say Henson. <laughs> Uh, ATV riders Jeff Henson is out at the Kawasaki HQ right now, and they have the Top Gun bike in. Oh man! Like on the floor. That's oh, like be cool. from the first movie. The Top Gun. The like fist pump as we're racing a jet bike. That okay. bike. <laughs> it's as good as you think it is. So sorry, Robbie. Spoiler alert. No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> from a movie from 1986. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Okay, next, be next, next time i'm on your show next, next time i'm on your show i'll make sure i've watched days of thunder and uh top gun oh I, almost said top, I, almost, I almost said top gear i was like nope i've seen top gear you should, watch that, too. <laughs> you should watch that too man. days of yeah. top gun two days of thunder <laughs> days of thunder is really good because michael rooker's really good in that movie he's like, great tom everybody's great. a regular tom cruise but, i mean that's also good oh movie. um which brother is it? I'm gonna get it wrong. It's not Dennis. It's the other one. He's it's the me. team owner. Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid. Thank you. I could even get Quaid out. It's not yeah. Dennis Quaid. It's the yeah. other Quaid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's pretty good. Anyway. Okay. Old movie recommendations. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Actually, so. real real fast. I watched Uncharted recently. Like I actually paid the six bucks to rent Uncharted. Mark Wahlberg, Tom Holland. Um, I enjoyed the crap out of it. It was, it was, it's, it's like an Indiana Jones style movie. And I know it's based off a video game from PlayStation, but it was, yeah, I, that reason it was better. No, it was, Ross, you'd like it. Plus there was classic Mercedes and Antonio Banderas is in it being a, a villain. <laughs> oh, I don't like Wahlberg. Nice. You don't like Wahlberg? Man. Okay. Man. Real quick sidebar. The reason I like Mark Wahlberg is there was a comedian for a long time. That did an impression of Mark Wahlberg, and so like on a podcast I like to listen to, they would put in quotes that the guest was Mark Wahlberg, but it's mm-hmm. this comedian doing the impression the whole time, and he'd go 100% commitment, and nobody at the show would ever like talk to him in his other. It was always Mark, mm-hmm. and so <laughs> that comedic impersonation of him for years is the reason why I now enjoy the real Mark Wahlberg, because <laughs> all I'm doing is hearing. The comedic impersonation the whole time. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's is that reverse that's psychology? Like Wahlberg's entourage. 
I've never seen anything wrong. You've seen Entourage? No. Oh my god. Oh. All right. Speaking of that's your, news, that's your know. homework. Watch eight seasons of Entourage. No. <laughs> I've been watching Tacoma FD lately. I've been catching up on that. Oh, I gotta watch that. Okay. This, the, before this turns into a TV podcast. <laughs> Robbie, what do you want to plug? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I am on Twitter at Robbie underscore DeGraff AP. You can also follow us at Auto Pacific. We're going to be posting some data from our next future attribute demand study, which measures consumer demand and interest in vehicle features. We got some really, really cool stuff that we've been working on. Um, that is my Sabaru. And <laughs> that's all That's all I got. Yeah. After when this when this picture came up and it was like I feel like I need more to match the idea. I was like no you don't you've taken great pictures already with the <laughs> <laughs> you got I good ones. it's a nice I canoe try. you have on the top of it it's all right I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out my boy Austin at work because he took this drone shot in the woods in Wyoming and nice. it's, my, it's my background on everything at work oh. right now and it's fantastic so perfect uh but Austin yeah doesn't listen, thanks so we're good <laughs> thanks for having me on I appreciate definitely. It. Thanks, Robbie. Always a pleasure. This is a good, good episode. It's nice to catch up. So, mm-hmm. always.